again, everyone, and welcome back to a special sponsored episode of the Auto Remarketing Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Sulovich, part of the team at Cherokee Media Group and senior editor of AutoFin Journal and Subprime Auto Finance News. For this special sponsored episode of the Auto Remarketing Podcast, pleased to welcome back Jeremy Beck, who is Vice President of Sales Operations at GWC Warranty. Jeremy, it's it's great to have you back on another special sponsored episode of the podcast. I am excited to be back, Nick. Uh, certainly have enjoyed our conversations previously and looking forward to this one as well. Well, uh, the topic for, for this particular uh, conversation is transparency and the sales and F&I process. And, and Jeremy, to, to start out our, our conversation, uh, what, do you th- what do you think it means to be uh, transparent uh, when it comes to vehicle sales and, and the F&I processes at dealerships? Yeah, you know, you know what, Nick, I think that that's a fantastic question um, because transparency can you know, really mean a lot of different things. And, and look, let's let's be real with ourselves that in the auto industry and specifically in the retail portion of the auto industry, we've really tried to guard as much information as we possibly can in both the sales and the S&I process from consumers. You know, that's been done for, I think, multiple reasons, fear of loss of profits. Uh, fear of, you know, giving them too much information to give them information overload and not being able to make a decision, uh, fear of giving them too much information to where they make the wrong decision from what we think uh, the right decision could be. But I think, you know, right now, look, I mean, we've gone through a very um, a tedious time in the auto industry over the last, you know, year, year and a half, and and really look to continue that as we move into 2022. And if the pandemic has done anything for the car business, and I'm kind of one on the side of, I think it's done a lot of positive things for the car business. Uh, it's also obviously hindered uh, some things in the car business. But I think one of the positive things that, Um, the pandemic has really done is it forced dealers to be transparent, to give consumers the information that, look, they can find on their own, but to give it from a source where the consumer is choosing to reach out and, and, you know, engage in in the car buying process. And, And I think the more information we can give them from the source that they've chosen to interact with in the buying process, the better we are. So I think when we start to talk about what is transparency, um, it really boils down into providing the consumer the information that they're not only that they not only want, but honestly that they're demanding for. And then, then I believe the second piece to that to that definition is providing cohesive information throughout the process, from sales to F and I to service, making sure that we're not contradicting ourselves, we're not providing um, wrong information, that our terminology is correct, that we're providing all of the aids that a consumer would really need in order to make the buying experience uh, positive, both for the dealer and for the consumer. So I think to me uh, and to our companies, uh, that's really what transparency means in the sales uh, and F&I processes. Well, well said, and and certainly as as you referenced, uh, trying to find those positives out of out of this pandemic that has has impacted all of us certainly is a, is a is a best practice to to say the least. Well, as you uh, referenced it a bit already, and and perhaps it's it's an obvious question, but still nonetheless, just how. How crucial is it for the the same details and information uh, to be shared during a potential face-to-face negotiation at the dealership that the the buyer, potential buyer might have already seen uh, on the store website or or other locations during their their shopping journey? How how crucial is the the consistency that that might uh, be in place? Yeah, Nick, I think that it's incredibly crucial. And I think it's incredibly crucial for a couple of reasons. Number one, we're talking about building trust. Look, with with transparency comes trust with the consumer. And ultimately, that's what we have to gain from the consumer in order for them to not only make the decision to buy the vehicle from us, but in order to increase our profits, increase their comfortability, increase their confidence in the overall buying experience, which we all know 
transparency leads to trust, trust leads to confidence, confidence leads to a buyer and ultimately more profits. And, and I think, you know, ultimately, let's look at you mentioned, you know, thir- uh, uh, you know, not only the stores website, but also third party, uh, third party researchers. I mean, look, we all know the consumers have in the palm of their hand, a plethora of information about you know the buying process what to do and not do to buy a car how to negotiate it correctly what products to buy and not buy and how do dealers make profit and you know all of these different things we know the information is out there we need to be forthright with the information that we have to not only counter that but also to to engage in constructive conversation with the consumers we can't put our heads in the sand and act like consumers aren't looking at this information or become defensive when they come in with all of their research that they've done and and you know it disagrees with our stance because we're you know we're a business and we're trying to sell a vehicle or trying to make you know more profits Um, we have to really kind of engage and understand what resources are out there what is the consumer seeing both from a negative and a positive experience standpoint and how, what resources can we then provide to the consumers uh, to help tell our story and to help combat some of the you know, uh, other information that potentially we disagree with? And I think ultimately, would we rather the consumer, would we, would we rather control the narrative as, as a car dealer? Meaning, would we rather the consumer find all the information or as much as they could possibly find on our website you know, on the, 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 the do's and the don'ts and the positives of the products and the positives of the vehicles, or would we rather them go to third-party websites where we can't control the narrative? We don't uh, have any say in that narrative. The answer, obviously, is let's us, let, let, let us control that narrative and let us really be able to provide the consumer as much information as possible on our website and then make, the sh- make again, sure that that information is then cohesive into their on-site experience, that we're speaking the same language, that we're having the same conversations, that we're referencing uh, the research that they likely did on our website, uh, all of those different things. It's truly a crucial piece of the, if you will, new or a new element of the sales process uh, that, that we've really kind of been forced into uh, throughout the last you know, year and a half to two years. And it's not going to go away, Nick. Uh, Again, the voice you're hearing is our special guest for this special sponsored episode of the Auto Remarketing Podcast. It's Jeremy Beck, who is Vice President of Sales Operations at GWC Warranty. Well, well, certainly, as as you've clearly articulated, uh, uh, the the path to uh, a transparent sales process, uh, again, how... How does it uh, benefit consumers and, and perhaps uh, hopefully what will end up being a, a happy customer and, and maybe some, some potential referrals or other ancillary benefits? Again, how does, how does this transparent sales process benefit the consumer? I really think um, that that's a critical uh, question and, and really a critical point in, in our sales uh, process. Ultimately, it benefits the customer because it gives the customer something that they're demanding. The consumers are demanding more information. They're demanding more research. They're doing it on their own. Uh, they, they are asking tougher questions because of the research that they've done, especially in the you know, last year, year and a half through the online retailing, you know, kind of uh, resurgence or uh, insurgence into our sales processes. The consumers are, are demanding more of that information. So I think the first benefit is we're giving them something that they're demanding, that they're wanting. The second uh, benefit, I think, to the consumer and, and ultimately, I think, to the dealer is that it begins to build a level of trust. You know, I call it a transfer of equity, right? Um, there is a natural transfer of equity when we're providing some of the same information or reiterating some of the uh, same points or even providing counterpoints to some of the research that the consumers are doing on their own. We begin to transfer some of that equity of trust over from those third part, those trusted third party source sources that seem to be indifferent, right? But really aren't, but seem to be indifferent, uh, and then uh, transfer it over to us again, the ones that they've chosen, that the consumer has chosen to engage in the car buyer in the car buying experience. I think the second big benefit is, you know, just again, with trust comes a level of confidence, and confidence brings a level of comfort. 
the more we're upfront, the more that we're less guarded, the more that we're open about the positives and negatives of buying a vehicle, um, purchasing, uh, you know, optional products, you know, making sure that we're not telling them it's required, making sure that we're differentiating the difference between warranty and VSC and all of those other things. Those are just a, a couple of quick examples. It, it truly begins to set the customer in a level of comfort and a level of confidence within the transaction uh, that they're doing. I think, look, we have to be real with ourselves to understand that, um, you know, transparency and, 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 or the lack of transparency has really been one of the number one deterrents for consumers wanting to buy a vehicle. You know, I, you know, I tell everybody all the time, I've been in the car business for 22 years, and I tell everybody all the time when they ask me what I do for a living, uh, you know, I sell cars, I'm in the car business. And we all know the look that we get when <laughs> you tell somebody for the first time <laughs> that you're in the car business and that you're that salesperson. Uh, and, 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 and look, I'm proud to be able to do that but I'm proud to be able to do that because I have a level of confidence in the way that I interact with my consumers, with my customers. I did when I was selling cars. I believed in that transparent, uh, in that transparent process, and it tends to put consumers at ease. Uh, and, and we know that you know, the more that they're at ease, the less that they are deterred from uh, interacting. I think the final point I would probably make on, you know, the benefits of the consumer to the consumers for transparency, Nick, is, you know, just look at the data, look at the, 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 the folks that the, the, the businesses that have really kind of started to make an impact on our business, the consolidators, the online retailers, you know, you can look at the Carvanas, the rooms, they have using, or excuse me, they have used uh, um, transparency and the, provi the providing of information as a uh, as a true advantage for them to gr to get consumers to interact and buy the vehicle from them over the last several years. So why not flip the script? Why not allow us to start you know playing that game and and really again benefiting the consumer by <clears throat> providing that same information that the consolidators and that the online retailers are doing, so that the consumers have a level of trust with us on our physical location, as well as our, our online interactions, uh, why not use a play from that playbook to help increase sales, increase profits, and at the same time, increase consumer confidence, uh, consumer trust, which ultimately increases uh, our reputation. Well, Jeremy, as you referenced, uh, certainly the the other important component of of that car business is is the dealership and and as you uh, alluded to a bit already, what what again are are the benefits uh, potentially for the dealership if they have uh, transparency in their yeah. in their sales and F and I processes, uh, perhaps to continue to. to stem that, uh, uh, turn the tide of, as you referenced that, that questionable look when you mentioned that being involved in the right. car business, how can, again, dealers benefit when, when transparency is, is in play in sales and F and I? Yeah, I think it goes back to the trust and the confidence, uh, honestly, Nick. I mean, I, I keep harping on that, but that's truly the massive benefits, both from the consumer standpoint, but also from the dealer's standpoint. Look, we all have, you know, I remember when I was running my dealerships and one of the biggest, uh, you know, KPIs that I looked at uh, in my dealership metrics was what, what level of consumers came back to my dealership as a referral or came back, back as a secondary buyer or a third buyer or whatever the situation may be, because it cost me less to get that customer, right? I didn't have to spend as much money on marketing if a higher percentage of my sales we're coming from, from a referral base or a repeat customer base. You only get that higher percentage if you provide the consumers a positive experience. You only get a positive experience if you provide customers the data, the information, the research, the transparency that they're looking for. The more information you provide for that, the more consumers feel trust and confidence in you as a retailer, right, and as a, as a business, and then the more confident that they are capable of either number one, buying another vehicle from you, number two, referring their family and friends to you, and you will start to see the tick up of referral, uh, of the percentage of referrals and repeat customers, you will start to see that percentage of your customer base on your monthly sales every single month start to tick up, which then allows you to disperse 
those those retail dollars or those marketing dollars in other ways to be able to enhance your business. So I think you know I think you're giving the consumers what they want. You're increasing your trust and confidence with the consumers. You're increasing your retail sales. You're increasing your 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 profits because consumers are at ease when you're not afraid or guarded to give them the information. And then ultimately, one of the biggest things is you're increasing your reputation, which uh, which traditionally and will continue to drive more consumers to your lot, whether it's online or virtual. So I think there's a ton of benefits uh, to the dealer from that respect. Our expert guest you're hearing on this special sponsored episode of the Auto Remarketing Podcast is Jeremy Beck, who is Vice President of Sales Operations at GWC Warranty. And and Jeremy, certainly uh, this, this good, bad, or otherwise ongoing pandemic has certainly accelerated some, some change here in the, in the car business, but what areas uh, of sales and F&I uh, do you still see needing to, to evolve to become even more uh, transparent, even if some elements have seen some accelerated change? Uh, what do you see as the, the evolution needing uh, still some work to be done on the transparency front? Yeah, yeah. I think you know the, the first answer to that question is we'll never be 100% there, right? We're constantly <laughs> going to have to work on making sure that we're as transparent as we possibly can be, that we're as compliant as we possibly can be, that we're ultimately respectful uh, of the customer's time, effort, uh, and, and impact that they have you know, on our business. But I think some of the you know, few things that still have some work to do uh, from a from an evolution standpoint and a transparency standpoint uh, in the in the car businesses. Number one, don't just stick to your resources when you're providing information about the vehicle and or the services and products that you offer uh, as optional to the consumer. Don't be afraid to go out and pull some of those uh, third party resources. Look, I mentioned earlier, they're going to find it anyway. Right. So why not engage with some of those third party researchers or resources and say, hey, I want to put I want to put this information on my website. You know, do I have the, the do I have the authority to do that and enter into an agreement with those third party resources and put some of that information out on your website because it keeps your customer on your website. It keeps your customer on you and it shows them that, hey, you're not just relying on what you think is the best you know, decision for the consumer, but you're also relying on some of those trusted natural third party uh, resources. So I think, you know, number one, let's, let's put some of that stuff out. Let's put it in our showrooms. Let's put it on our sales desk. Let's make sure that that experience is cohesive. I think number two is providing explainer aids and prices uh, if necessary. Let me look, we, from a, from a, from a vehicle transaction standpoint, we put the price of the vehicle online. Why would we not put prices or options for the consumers for F&I products uh, and optional services uh, on, on our websites as well and allowing the consumers to be able to pick and choose the options that fit their driving habits, their customer experience uh, the most? I know the answers that are going to come back. Uh, well, there's too many options. There's too many prices. There's too many variables. There really aren't. Right. I mean, yes, there are a ton of options, but, you know, again, one of the things, the positive things that we've seen really over the last two years through the pandemic and the chip crisis is, is the advent of the digital retailing experience and, and the software pieces that are out there that allow you to very seamlessly and uh, present an integrated experience for the consumer to be able to sh allow them to see what's where are the third party resources, what are the what are the options, and then what are the prices for the options that I've chosen, which really allows the consumer to do the education and the research on themselves and potentially make the decision on themselves or be armed with better information when they come in uh, and they engage you. I think the other thing that we have to do from a uh, from an evolution standpoint is we have to really work on our terminology. Um, I've said this for years. I've been very unsuccessful in getting this, you know, across the industry. So I continue to say it. There is a difference between a warranty and a vehicle service contract. The consumers know the difference between a warranty and a vehicle service contract. We need to use the right terminology in our marketing 
and in our in our you know face to face or voice to voice interactions or written communications uh, with the consumers, we need to use that right information because here's why that is so critical. If you refer to a vehicle service contract as a warranty, and the consumer goes out and does their research when they type into Google or they type into you know uh, one of the internet browsers and start to to do their research, they're going to type in the word warranty. And they're going to see that it should be at no cost to the consumer. They're going to see a lot of different things, and they're going to get the wrong information to come in and have a conversation with you when you could have dispelled that a lot of that myth if you had just used the right terminology as a vehicle service contract. Some of the other common ones are bumper to bumper. Look, there is not a single coverage that exists today that I'm aware of, at least, that actually is bumper to bumper that covers the bumper, the front bumper to the back bumper. It doesn't exist. Why do we continue to say to use that terminology to the consumer when we're giving the wrong perception? Um, even the the manufacturer's warranty manual doesn't say bumper to bumper anymore, right? Um, and and shouldn't say bumper to bumper. And it says it's a limited warranty coverage for a reason because it has exclusions. And by definition, if it has an exclusion, it can't be bumper to bumper. So I think those are a couple of examples of ways that we can kind of really uh, increase our evolution from a terminology standpoint. I think the next one is really kind of the biggest for me, um, which is our payment quoting. You know, for years in our business, uh, we have quote unquote packed the payment. Now I know everybody's probably rolling their eyes as I say this, um, but at the end of the day, packing the payment is not compliant. It does it is not transparent, and it does not start to build trust and and and, and confidence with the consumers. We need to be confident in the, in in a couple of things in the car business. We have some of the best salespeople in the entire world. I have traveled this country. I have traveled to hundreds of thousands of different dealerships. I would stack most car salespeople up against any other industry from a sales technique and a sales capability standpoint. Let them sell. Don't give them uh, you know, a way out. Don't make them weaker, if you will, by packing the payment. And then miraculously, you know, a fully protected quote unquote loan uh, only raises the consumer's um, you know, uh, payment by $10 when they get into the F&I box. That's not transparent. And at the end of the day, the consumers know it. M- maybe some of them don't. Maybe some of them aren't, ty- aren't going into an, uh, into an online payment calculator. But probably 90 to 95% of them are going in there and saying, what's my interest rate? What's my amount financed? What's my down payment? What's my sales price? And, and they're coming up with a completely different payment than what you are. Look, they know how to play the game as well because there are online resources that tell them how to play the game, quote unquote, right? So they're not going to tell you that they know that that's not the right payment. They're going to wait till that gets to that deal, till they get into the box because they know that's where the, the real transaction happens. And then they're going to, then it's going to be a combative experience between the, the consumer and the F&I manager. Tell the payment exactly what it is. I say this in every you know dealership that I go to. The math has to work. It's the same as advertising a vehicle. The payment, the price, the interest rate, the down payment, the trade, tax title and license, show them what their payment is, and then tell them the benefits, provide them the transparent information throughout the, the owner, throughout the buying experience to then get back into the F and I office if you still have F and I offices. And be able to engage in the engage with the F and I manager on why those products and benefits are worth the extra money on their payment to enhance their ownership experience. Yeah, you could probably tell Nick I'm extremely passionate um, about uh, you know about this stuff because these are things that we still have to evolve in our business on to change the mindset to stop the cutting of the eyes when you tell somebody that you're in the car business. Right. And, and, and rightfully, rightfully so shows how how much work, not only words and, and numbers as well, really, really do matter, especially when it comes to making a, a vehicle purchase. That's uh, perhaps the, the, the second highest uh, purchase someone will will ever make. Right. Uh, to say the least. Uh, closing moments here on this special sponsored episode of the Auto Remarketing Podcast with Jeremy Beck who is the Vice President of Sales Operations at GWC Warranty. And, and Jeremy, we, we've covered so, 
so much great ground here uh, focused on the on transparency and sales and, and the F&I process. Uh, uh, along with wh what you've already referenced, uh, what what other tools or, or best practices or recommendations might you like to share to to round us out that can help dealers uh, accomplish uh, that drive toward uh, more transparency? Yeah, I think I think that's a natural you know uh, closing question, right, Nick? Because you know we've talked about how to be transparent, why you should be transparent what the benefits to the consumer and to the dealer are. Now the question is really, okay, well, what tools are out there to, to enable me to, to do what I'm saying needs to be done uh, in the car business? And I think that there's a, there's a couple of different aspects of the tools that, that uh, are important to understand and important to cover. First and foremost is you can get all of the third-party resources uh, and explainer videos and infographics and all of that stuff to put on your website and your online marketing um, and, and in your in-store marketing from your F&I provider. If they don't have it, um, then they should, right, at the end of the day. And they should be able to give you best practices, uh, best ways to be able to really enhance the transparency and ways to be able to, to, to employ that uh, onto your website uh, with the dealers that they already do business with. So I would say, number one, reach out to your F&I product services providers uh, and, or provider and and ensure that that they're providing you with the capabilities that they have uh, and and best practices. I think the second thing is you know when we start about talk, start to talk about pricing and and you know uh, integrated payments and all of those different things. There's a ton of digital retail platforms out there now. Things like a new one pops up every other week uh, with you know in, in our current uh, environment that we're in. And so I think those digital retail platforms truly uh, provide an ease of integration with the providers for pricing, for options. Um, there's, there's a lot of work that those digital retail integrators uh, or platforms have already done on the back end to tie in integrations with the, with the major providers, to tie in information with, the, you know, with third party resources and all of that stuff. So a lot of that work has already been done. It's just a matter of selecting the right digital retail platform uh, for you uh, and for your dealership. And again, I would say that your F&I provider can really help lead you down the path. They should be able to know who are the digital retail providers, what are their strengths, what are their, witness, uh, what are their weaknesses, what are the things that they still have to work on and the, the benefits of doing business with them and really allow you to make an, a, you know, a, the best decision for your dealership uh, on which uh, platform uh, to go with. You know, there's also the DMS and the CRMs, right? The DMS, most DMSs now offer payment quoting uh, worksheets, you know, to really be able to, to help you aid uh, in ensuring that your desk managers uh, and that, you know, the desk is really presenting accurate payments. You can, you can set all of those settings within your DMS or within your CRM or your penciling software. Since most of us have really kind of gotten away from the, you know, from the Sharpie and the, and the white paper and the Foursquare, we're, we're a little bit more uh, technological than that, but you can change the settings or ensure that the settings are right to ensure that you're putting in, uh, that your desk managers are fulfilling your mission of transparency uh, and, and providing accurate uh, payment quotes. And I think the final thing I would say is your provider, your F&I provider really should be able to provide you full scale training options um, on all of these to be able to implement them into your store from sales process training to F&I process training to overcoming objections to helping you with the tools and resources to be able to put on your website and on your uh, picture carousels and your um, and your uh, um, you know vehicle um, uh, display uh, uh, online advertising they really should be able to come in and help you with a cohesive training experience to to get your people ingrained new belief and then in the new processes because all of the systems, all of the tools, all of the things that I've talked about are really great but will completely fall flat on their, uh, on their face if you do not train anyone and everyone that is involved in the sales process of a vehicle with a consumer and your F&I provider should be able to provide uh, every bit of that. That's Jeremy Beck, Vice President of Sales Operations at GWC Warranty. 
Jeremy, thank you so much for, for sharing so much great information and and emphasizing your enthusiasm for transparency and <laughs> in, in sales and the F&I processes at dealerships. Thank you so much again. Absolutely. Thank you, Nick, for uh, some good questions and a good conversation on what is a truly vital topic uh, for our business today. And if you've missed any of our past episodes of the podcast where we discuss more uh, important topics in the car business, simply just go to our website at autoremarketing.com and click on the podcast box to find our library of past episodes. For our fellow hosts, Bill Zedites and Joe Overby, as well as our executive producer, Matt Rice, I'm Nick Zulovich. We thank you for joining us for this special sponsored episode of the Auto Remarketing Podcast.